It's number one against number three in the battle for supremacy in Eastern Mass Division I football. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Cox. Welcome to Zavarian Brothers High School in Westwood. These uh, Hawks have been number one throughout the season, according to the Boston Globe poll. But the boxers come in here trying to dethrone them and prove that they belong on top of the standings. Uh, Steve Alley, George McCabe, the Zavarian coach, was sort of downplaying the significance of this game this week. He said uh, it's not a league game, but I, I guess it's important because we're 5-0 and or 4-0 and and we'd like to be 5-0. and uh, What do you think? Do you think he thinks it's a big game? Absolutely. A coach tries to downplay it to limit the pressure on his team. But I once heard a quote to say, if you want to be the best, you've got to play the best. These are two of the top teams, and the winner today will be the best of Eastern Mass. It's going to be a great game today. A lot of running today, two great backs in the Severian team to watch today, Camella and Kennedy, and of course the boxer running attack has been strong throughout. We'll have the lineups and all the action for you in just a moment. different from what you went through and there's a lot you can share with them so before your kids make important decisions like smoking talk to them help them decide not to smoke everybody needs help talking to their kids sometimes call for your free booklet on how parents can talk to their teenagers about smoking and other tough issues the family course consortium believes smoking shouldn't be a part of growing up the boxers on the field the hawks have just made their way onto the uh, turf here at Zavarian Brothers High School, and it's, uh, this is, uh, I'd say, Steve, the most uh, enthusiastic crowd we've seen at either location, home or away, uh, this season, and with good cause. This is a big one. You know, I, I really expected a larger crowd than Zavarian sites. For the first time this year, believe it or not, Brockton has outnumbered the fan count here. I mean, at Marciano Stadium, Tom Paleski, I know, is very upset. The people of Brockton have not been coming out and supporting Brockton, and in that, Tom Paleski and the athletic department are losing money. They need that gate money. We've got a great crowd here from Brockton today. It's terrific. Everybody's out for uh, the big one. Anticipating the matchup between number three, Brockton, and number one, Zavarian. The boxers, of course, uh, with their opening day loss, uh, were down in the rankings. Uh, as you look at the boxer. But uh, with each week, they've climbed a little bit further up and taking the big step up to number three last week, of course, with the stunning upset of Walpole High School, ending their 37-game winning streak. Uh, and the boxers find themselves at number three. Zavarian, uh, by contrast, has been at number one since preseason. We go to the center of the field where Lucian Belanger of the boxers is out there for the coin toss. Let's listen in. Hit, hit. Belanger winning the toss but electing to defer so the Hawks will receive the ball and defend the goal to our left. Hawks of course in their home blue with the gold trim, the white helmets, the boxers in their road white jerseys and the crimson uh, pants. Only the second road game of the year for the boxers. They travel down to Plymouth for their first victory of the season. That was uh, victory number 250 uh, in the career of Armin Colombo. As we prepare for the national anthem.
Timothy, I've just been informed a lot of us in Brockton thought that Severian never beat Brockton in football. They beat him in basketball and baseball and so on and so forth. But in 1968, Nick Zabelli from WBET is a, a Hawk alumnus. He informs us that the Hawks beat the Boxers 16 to 14, the only time on the gridiron that Severian has beaten Brockton. And I don't think, I just have a gut feeling, that Brockton faced their biggest test last week against Fitchburg. Not, not to put down Severian, but Brockton is riding a freight train right now, and all engines are on. It's going to be very tough to stop Brockton. Well, as we said, the Hawks were at the number one spot in preseason. They found their way into the top 25 nationally, according to USA Today. But since then, they've had some struggles. They've gotten by Malden Catholic easily and St. John's of Shrewsbury, two teams that have struggled uh, themselves. Uh, but they had difficulty getting past two Division Three teams, Duxbury and Whitman Hanson. And uh, because they're undefeated, they've held on to the top spot. But there's been some question about their ability to uh, focus on the task throughout the entire game. Alan Percy to kick off for the boxers. It's a windy day. And it is bobbled at the 10-yard line. That's Dion Young, who is hit and taken down. Larry Stroud down there. Stroud downfield, good coverage for the boxers. And the Hawks come out for the first time today. This is a pretty potent offense with a lot of weapons, particularly in the backfield. Let's take a look at it, if we can, as a, a big front line led by uh, Captain Hugh Stanton will be... Uh, Opening up the holes for Greg Camella and Brendan Kennedy. We'll take a look at the uh, personnel on offense for the Hawks in just a moment. First down, 10 for Zavarian. And on first down, it is Greg Camella. Gets a couple. Belanger on the stop, along with Warren. And here's that Zavarian offense. Up front, Minahan, Tiernan, Corey Bailey, your center and one of the few juniors in the starting lineup, Stanton and Mike White, another big player. Uh, in the backfield, Matt Hasselbeck is your quarterback, Brendan Kennedy, Greg Camella, the runners we told you about, Rodriguez back there to do some running, mostly blocking though, and uh, wide receiver Rochford, tight end McLaughlin. Watch Mike White, the offensive lineman, Lou Holtz at Notre Dame is licking his chops over him. The pitch goes to Rodriguez on the left side and not much there for the fullback. Both teams are well scouted, and I'd like to see Severian try to beat Brock on the ground. I don't believe they can. The only way Severian is going to be able to beat Brock is through the air. There's the boxer defense that held Fitchburg to just six points last week, Steve. They've no done changes. the job throughout the year. You don't that's, fix what's not broken. That's, that's exactly the right. old saying. The front five. And Belanger leading the charge in the backfield. The passing situation for the first time for the Hawks. Third and seven from their 26. Hasselbeck rolling right and is wrapped up by Persampieri. Broke free from Persampieri, but Jason Mosley finished the pass. Matt Hasselbeck started last year and had big time problems against Brockton. Every quarterback, every quarterback Brockton faces is put under tremendous pressure. Hasselback has no one downfield. No one downfield, and the pressure from the corners in the defensive end, and Persampieri over the center, just too much for him to handle. Loss of five on the play brings up fourth and 12, and on to do the punting is Hugh Stanton. The boxer should get the ball around midfield. Stanton takes a good long time and gets off a good high kick. Fair catch called for by Pat Velios and he'll have it at the Brockton 45-yard line. Just the way Armin Colombo wanted to start this game off. Put his defense out there first, clamp down on Severian's offense, or lack of in the first series, then we're gonna chew the clock up. There's the boxer offense, Brent Warren, the big man, at the tackle position, along with Dan Reardon, Floored and Psychos, and Mike Gregory. They've done the job for these people. Born, Mosley, and Belanger out of the backfield. Bernard and Pina, the twin tight ends. And Mike Shaheen, who continues to mature as a quarterback. Absolutely. Officials time out. They want to hold things up momentarily as the boxers begin first attempt their 45. And again, the officials will stop the action. The referee just now coming onto the field. And things will get underway for Brockton. The three men in the backfield. 
for Armin Colombo. And the first call will go to Bourne, but a flag stops the play. A dead ball foul called on Brockton. It will be illegal procedure. Brockton's been very, very disciplined. A big change from early in the season. The first couple of games, they were averaging five to eight penalties a game. Last week, I'm not sure, maybe one or two penalties against Fitchburg. That's how you win football games, discipline. So an inauspicious beginning for the Boxer offense, moving back five yards to their own 40. The Zavarian defense is uh, also strong up front. Stanton, Bailey, and White all turn around to play on that defensive line. And a lot of two-way players for Coach George McCabe. Bourne, again, gets the carry and is wrapped up after a gain of three. Brian McLaughlin from the linebacker position. And here is the Zavarian defense. Kennedy, the running back, also doubles at the defensive end. And Jeremy Ballerino on the other side. Uh, three linebacker formation with the Good five men up front. McLaughlin, Camella, and Buckland. Rodriguez and Rochford are your cornerbacks, and Dion Young, the lone safety for Zavarian. So second down 12 after the gain of three. Mosley in motion from the backfield. And the pitch to Bourne, following Belanger and Mosley, and picks up about five, but still well short of first down yardage. The boxers will be faced with third and long. Both defenses coming up big right now. Brockton going against the wind. They'll have the wind for the fourth quarter, though. The wind is uh, swirling somewhat, too, blowing northeast, north-northeast, I guess. Yeah, a little bit across the field towards us. And on third down, Bourne checks out, as do the tight ends, Bernard and Pina, as the receivers come in. Semper's Landers, in there. Semper Watch for the reverse. And Bellios. Always dangerous. Very quick. Third down, about eight from the Brockton 48-yard line. Shaheen, straight drop, has some time, and has Bellios. Patrick Bellios written out of bounds by Rodriguez at the Zavarian 30-yard line, and the Boxer air attack has them on the move. Marcus Rodriguez on one-on-one -on -one coverage with Rodriguez. No, I mean with Bellios, rather. Beautiful run, Pat and Shaheen, plenty of time back there, perfect, right on the numbers. And Pat does a nice job of turning it around and seeing what he can get. Straight ahead, Belanger, his first carry, and a second effort gets five yards. You know, there's one thing that Brockton has going for them, which Zavarian doesn't. Brockton has played week in, week out, top flight opponents. That's what makes Brockton a better team. And I said earlier, I think Brockton's gonna walk all over Severian. And the Hawks playing two struggling Division I squads from their own conference and two Division Three squads, which gave them trouble. Whitman Hansen, which held them in a tie game until the final quarter, and Duxbury, which uh, came back to uh, almost pull off the upset against the Hawks. But they are 4-0. They don't and know how to lose yet. Trying to hold on to the top spot. We got motion in the backfield, and the boxers will be pushed back five yards. Second offensive penalty on Brockton. That's the only thing Brockton has done wrong so far. Very disciplined. They've had a great week of practice. You can tell from Armin Colombo. If he, if he doesn't have a good week of practice, you can see it on the field. They've had a month full of great practices. And there's no weaknesses in Brockton right now. They're on a roll. Five-yard penalty pushes the boxers back to the 30 for second and nine. And the fake to Belanger, the give to Mosley. Gets about three of them back. Tripped up as he crossed the line of scrimmage by Hugh Stanton. Nothing fancy here, Tim. They're just going to run behind their strength. Watch, they're gonna come right at you, right here. Reverse direction and watch Jason Mosley coming right there, right into your face. Boxers stay with the twin tight end formation on third down and six. It is born, hits a wall right away and won't get there. Good pursuit. 
70, Neil Minahan leading the charge. 80, Brian McLaughlin in there also. And Mike nice, White. Nice gang tackle. Mike White has every major Division I school looking at him. He's come back from a serious knee injury, playing pain-free this year. He was a very bright kid. I think his grade point average is, is in the 3.85 area. He's got a lot of top flight colleges after him. So the boxers put to the test here. Three wide receivers on fourth down and six. They converted on third down through the air moments ago. Now coming out of the pocket, Shaheen. He looks like he has the first down yardage. Mike Shaheen has more than enough for the first down to keep the drive alive. Nice play by the boxer, QB. A lot of experience now in Mike Shaheen. A lot of experience. Knew he wasn't going to get the quality pass away. He's got two receivers in the right-hand side. He's trying to find both of them. The pocket was collapsing. Nice job by the offensive line. Shaheen said, hey, I see six yards easy. Run it, take the dive, first down boxers. Second big conversion for the boxers on this drive. Now Bourne going wide and ridden out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. We should acknowledge <laughs> at this early, out, uh, early juncture that it is extremely difficult on this field to determine the yardage. There are no numbers on the field to indicate the yard lines. Well, actually, there are numbers, but they're facing the home side. They don't Only put them on up the home on side. Both side. Uh, but none painted on the field, and the lines are very faint, so it is uh, difficult. We'll do our best to keep you uh, informed of where the ball is resting, but uh, even the ball on indicator on the scoreboard is not operating, so we're a little bit in the dark, but the boxers deep in Severian territory. Second down, Mosley is popped. Yeah. It was Mosley Belanger who had the ball, the ball however. <laughs> you even faked you out faked there. me out as Belanger the first man through. Mosley got leveled, but uh, Belanger picked up a yard or so now to set up the third down play. We've had quick games all year long, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say this will be the quickest game of the year. Unless, unless of course, Severian has nothing on the ground and they're going to force Hasselbeck to pass. Yeah, either he's team. tall, he's got a great arm, but he's really untested against a top flight defense. If either team gets pushed, they'll go to the air, but they prefer to keep it on the ground. Third down, four for the boxers. Shaheen to the air, has Mosley, and now the end zone for Pina. Contact there, but no flag, and uh, just a bit out of the reach of Pina. Coverage on the play by the cornerback Brian Rochford. You know, Shaheen had Jason Mosley at the dump out person, wide open. Everyone was concentrating in the in the end zone. Jason Mosley was wide open. Come on, deep forces for So for the second time on this drive, the boxers faced with fourth down. They converted on the Shaheen carry. But here they are with fourth and four. Shaheen to throw. Goes the other way with Bourne. Touchdown. What a play call by Armin Colombo. Reverse direction. Everybody goes right. What does Shaheen do? Come left to Bourne. His dump out. He had four blockers in front of him. There was no way Marcus Rodriguez was going to get Michael Bourne. Reminiscent of the play that defeated the boxers on Thanksgiving Day last fall. Sure was, zone Weymouth, defense. Weymouth going the opposite way. Mark Stanton throwing across field for the touchdown. And here it is working for the boxers, setting up the 6-0 lead with 3.14 to play in the first. Allen Bercy for the point after. And it is no good. Wide right. These are the short H-shaped goal posts and it may be difficult on the close plays to determine uh, if the kick is in or not. But this one's ruled wide right. The boxer lead remains six nothing. And the Cape Cod Cafe points, dollars for points program through the VHS Athletic Fund continues to grow. We came into today with the Cape Cod Cafe contributing $380 on the year. Now we're up to 404. The Cod will contribute $4 for every point scored by the boxers during our telecast. So $404 from the Cape Cod Cafe. On the touchdown, Mike Shaheen. 55 yards. So Mike Bourne. And the boxers out to the lead yeah, here in the first period. 
Timothy, 11 plays, 55 yards. That's a ball control offense. More impressive to me, Steve. They converted on third and long and twice on fourth and well, substantial yards. In that situation, again, you've already shot down Severian once. You're deep in their end, so if you don't make it, so what? Sure, the, the momentum may switch for a couple of minutes, but you, you get your defense out there and clamp them right down, you're still with great field position. That's a philosophy that Armin Colombo has gone with since I've been watching Brockton High School football, although I'm not that old now. No, you're not. Compared to you. <laughs> Don't forget, we'll be picking out Cape Cod Cafe MVP at the end of today's contest. It was a tough one last week. Yes, it was. Mike Landers was selected by the Boston Globe as the defensive player of the week in Division I for his interception that stopped Fishburg, kept them from scoring on the final drive, and preserved the boxer victory. We selected the entire boxer defense for their effort, and so holding deserved. Fishburg to six points. Here, the boxer offense gets things going, and Camella, the big man, up the middle, spins. And refuses to go down. Finally, Bernard Velios are there to wrap up Greg Camella along with Troy Semper. And Zaverian will start with pretty good field position at their 35-yard line. Mike Shaheen on that drive, two for three, 31 yards, two big passes, two, one on third down, one on fourth. Great, great composure by Shaheen. Seems we say it every week, but he's getting better and better. We got the tomahawk chop going by the Brockton High School band. In earnest. First and 10 Severian trailing by six at their own 34-yard line. The quick pass to Rochford on the left side. Landers on the coverage. You know, Locking in, uh, Rochford out of bounds, but it's close to first down yardage. In watching Hasselbeck, he's a five-step drop quarterback. And again, we say it every week, if you're going to beat Brockton with the pass, it's got to be a short two, three-step drop. Landers actually fell down on that play. He slipped. He lost his footing. That's why the receiver was so wide open. This is not uh, one of the better fields the boxers will play on during the course of the season. It is a first down, first completion for Hasselbeck, and Zaverian has it first and 10 at their 46. Camella hit quickly. Manages to pick up about two. Mosley and Belanger just collapsed on Camella. You have to wonder if Severian running game doesn't come around, will George McCabe go to the passing game? It'd be a tough call because he's got two horses in the, in the backfield. We've yet to see Kennedy carry the ball, but Camella- He's a bruiser. Both of them considered fine college prospects. Gain of two, second down eight at the 48. And the option, Hasselbeck keeps it, gets popped by Picard Jacques, but is close to first down yardage. And he bounces right up as if to say, I didn't feel anything. I think Picard Jacques fell that one. I he was slow getting up. He got the worst of it. Hasselbeck at 6'4", 195, uh, with that uh, tight end size Watch that this he inherited right from his there. dad. Dad was never this quick, though. Watch this hit. Nice shoulder pad. Don't tell me Hasselbeck didn't feel that one. I felt it up here. The Hawks into Brockton territory for the first time at the 43-yard line, first and 10. Using a combination of the pass and run on this drive, Hasselbeck again with the keeper as Craig Bernard. You know, it out again. you remember the Fitchburg's first turnover last week. It was almost a carbon copy play, but this time Hasselbeck didn't make the pitch, and it was probably the right, right call. Bernard has been a nightmare for opposition's offenses. He gets in the backfield so fast and he's so strong, arms, he just wrapped up Hasselbeck and threw him for a loss. The key there as well, Patrick Velios was tight on Camella, preventing Hasselbeck from making the pitch, forcing him to keep the ball and get wrapped up for the two yard loss by Bernard. Second down 12, just about a minute to play and a flag for delay of game. Attack on the five yard penalty, and we've got a seven yard loss. Severian back onto their own side of the field now. It was the Severian backfield that Hasselbeck wasn't happy with. He was trying to turn back and yell instructions to Kennedy and Camella. 
just took a little bit too much time. Kenny Legault has checked in as the extra defensive back with Chris Sykos heading for the sidelines before that uh, whistle was blown. Clock running now inside of 50 seconds on second down 17. And some of the Brockton fans indicating that Brian Rochford, the receiver on the near side, was offside. No flag. Deep Long one. pass for Kennedy. Incomplete. Terrific right. effort by Kennedy. Right on target. Brockton again, their pass defense, if there's one weakness, and it's not even a weakness, it's just taking, taking your opportunity as you get them. Hasselbeck's got a rifle for an arm. That was floated in there perfect, although he is passing with the wind. That was right in there. Hasselbeck had plenty of time from his offensive line and looked downfield for Brendan Kennedy, the running back out of Hanover. You know, I was watching Kennedy in the warm-ups. He didn't catch more than three out of 10 passes that was thrown to him in warm-ups. Warm-ups and game pressure are three completely different things. Third down, 17. And here comes Good the count. rush. Big Jason. Jason for Sampieri for the second time gets in on Hasselbeck for a huge loss. A 10-yard loss of yardage on the sack by for Sampieri, setting up the punt. Credit the Brockton pass coverage also because Hasselbeck had nothing, nothing at all downfield. <laughs> That will do it in the first quarter. The Boxers doing the job on defense, getting the points on the board on offense, and take a six to nothing lead after the first period of play. Second quarter action coming up in just a moment. Don't go away. Timothy, just some first quarter stats from a statistician, Leo Genitasio. Severian, first quarter, 18 yards of offense, 10 through the year, eight on the ground. So that feared Severian running attack really nil right and, now. And that Brock. yardage came from Hasselbeck. He got yeah, the one did. Yeah. run for the first down. Yeah. And the 10-yard uh, completion to Rochford. This brings up fourth down and 32. And Stanton now punting against the win. Gets off a low kick, may get a good bounce out of it. No, he doesn't. Brian McLaughlin downs it, reaches back for it. Well, and what, it'll be down at the 38-yard 38 38 line. Tough. Brockton. <laughs> it's tough. I'm looking at the 50-yard line and trying to work my way back in five-yard increments. And the lines are slowly but surely disappearing. Following that third down sack by Jason Persampieri, Jason's dad gave a bear hug to our cameraman, Joe Goldsberry, <laughs> as if we were a member of the family. <laughs> That's how enthusiastic uh, the Boxer fans are today, and uh, reason to be proud for Jason Stead. Jason's having a fine season early on. And a terrific game today in the early going. Two sacks, that'll be something. First and 10 at the 37-yard line of Brockton as they open the second quarter, leading six to nothing. Up the middle goes Belanger. He's hit hard, but fights for about three. That's the only way they know how to hit Lucian. That's the only way you bring him down. You have to hit him hard. Two or three, two or three blue shirts are gonna have to bring him down. His legs never stop dry, driving, rather. Just think, five weeks ago, he, he, he never ran the ball before. There's that Marciano jacket on the back <laughs> of Peter, of Peter Marciano. Marciano, that custom made airbrush. Airbrush jacket uh, the legend, his uncle. The legend lives on. Michael Bourne. There he goes. Bourne cuts back. 16-yard line. Is it the 16, Tim? I don't know. 16 or 17-yard line, they'll call him down. Again, we saw this last week. He was just a straight-ahead runner a couple of weeks ago. 
He, he moves. Look at the size of the hole right there. Beautiful hole. Beautiful job by the offensive line. And from there, it's just speed. Will he be caught? Maybe he should have tried straight for the end zone, but he tries cutting right here. Cuts on, back Kevin, right by that time. Marcus Thir Rodriguez. And number 32, Kevin Keller. Big play for Brockton. The speed of Rodriguez prevented the touchdown. The boxers first and 10 at the Zavarian 17-yard line. Shaheen going straight ahead. Taking the Hawks by surprise, picks up a good six yards. Well, when you run behind Brent Warren, <laughs> you're guaranteed a few yards. Shaheen just put the ball to the gut and put his head right on big number 56. Call it five as Shaheen lunges ahead to the 12 yard line. Wow, Brockton exploding on offense. This is something the Boxer fans hope to see after last week's performance. The defense was so strong, but there had to be some concern about whether the offense had taken a step backwards, able to score only the seven points against Fitchburg. Michael Bourne spins ahead close to first down yardage. He should have it. You know, Tim, going into last week's game, everyone was talking about Fitchburg's offense. They had a heck of a defense, I'll tell you. They're not a one-dimensional team at all. Nothing against Brockton's offense. They played as well as they could do, but Fitchburg's defense was up to the task. Bourne, Bourne seven. Six runs for 70 yards. Another banner day, and we're only very early in the second quarter. Seven of them right there to pick up the first down. First and goal at the five for the Boxers. Belanger, good for two. You know, compared to Brockton's other two runners, Belanger is running at such a disadvantage. He has no blockers up there. When Bourne gets the ball, he's already got Belanger and Mosley, two huge backs, ripping open huge holes. So when Belanger gets it, it's really him that's making the yard. He has to make his own holes, and he usually does it. Just like Chris Campbell a couple of years ago in the natural wishbone with Comer and Williams back there. Second and goal from the three. Shaheen again. Touchdown! Michael Shaheen finding out that he likes to carry the ball too. His third carry of the day, good for the score. And with a little help from the win now, Alan Bercy will try the extra point. His last one was knocked a bit wide by the strong breeze today. This one is a fake, Shaheen for Belanger. Two points <laughs> and a flag in the end zone, but it appeared to be after the play was good. Shaheen is down. I Shaheen wasn't is down. Michael might have got popped. He's all right. He's all right. <laughs> Helped up by Belanger. Taking a rest. And Tina. Let's see who the penalty on is on. And it appears that the boxers will have to try it again. Armin Colombo wanted that 14-point lead. He doesn't want it to come down to an extra point. Still awaiting the uh, official signal, but it will be against Brockton. Now will they, they're gonna have to go for a chip shot right here. Still haven't seen what the call is. Uh, the referee just gave the signal, but uh, there's still some discussion about how this will be handled. Well, the Brockton, Brockton players are clapping their hands. And now it's the good. indication is it's good. The penalty waved off. And now George McCabe is uh, giving uh, his thoughts to the officials as the boxers open up the 14-0 lead. And with the $28 that the Cape Cod Cafe contributes to the Brockton High School Athletic Fund, our season total is now up to $432. $432, the Cape Cod Cafe to the BHS Athletic Fund. And take another this look at the touchdown. Nothing fancy there. Power football, and Brockton's the more powerful team right now. Although, this game isn't over yet. Severian has not lost this year. They don't know how to lose. They're not gonna go down without a fight. Take my word for it. The game is far from being over, but with Brockton looking so good, 
The Hawks certainly have their work cut out for them. Yeah, it's an unfamiliar situation for both teams. The variant used to uh, trying to be the uh, giant killer when they face Brockton. Brockton always finding the teams play their best and trying to knock them off. But here we are with the boxers trying to climb into the top spot in Division I. And Eastern Massachusetts off to a great start with eight minutes to play in the first half. It's a 14 to nothing Brockton lead. Camella, Kennedy, and Young deep for the Hawks. And Alan Bercy gets off a line drive that Young will field at the 20. Cuts back to the right side and continues going. Dion Young. Jason Mosley gets him down. But a huge return by Young. That's why Severian's number one. Neon Dion, we remember him from last year. Very exciting football player. But the least regarded of the three return men with Kennedy and Camella back there, Dion Young, the senior from Wellesley, ignites the Zavarian crowd and responds quickly to the second boxer touchdown. Fielded it near the 20 and gets it all the way to the Brockton 24 yard line where it's first and 10 for the Hawks. Camella puts his head down and then falls backwards for a gain of two. This is where Brockton's defense has been so tough in the red zone. How many times did Fitchburg have the ball down there last week? They came up with one touchdown and that was through the air. I don't know if George McCabe will have Hasselbeck pass into the air. He's Hawks going against, the, against wind, the wind, against exactly. the wind. That's what I meant. The, the wind is picking up. Second down, about seven. And Hasselbeck will throw. Into the end zone and out of the reach of Rochford. Brian Rochford got his fingertips on it. Matt Hasselbeck got popped by Craig Bernard as he released the ball. But a pretty good throw against that wind. Yeah, he's a big, strong kid. He's got a strong arm, floated There's it right Bernard. out there. Bernard got him blindsided. Rochford, really, it really would have been a tough catch. Just out of his reach, and it stops the clock with 7.07 to play in the half, and brings up third down from the 20-yard line. Hasselbeck, now rolling left. Bernard was held down. The pass incomplete, intended for Kennedy. Coverage on the play by Semper. Craig Bernard in pursuit was grabbed from behind and pulled down, but no penalty marker, and it'll bring up fourth down. Hasselbeck's pocket is collapsing almost instantaneously. Brockton's pressure is just too intense. They're making Hasselbeck throw on the run and against the wind. That ball was about a foot too short. Great coverage downfield also. The Hawks will take a timeout faced with their most crucial play. I say he has, thus far. he has to go for it. A field goal in this wind is not instantaneous. Even if, again, use Armand Colombo's philosophy, even if they don't make it, Brockton is trapped inside deep in their red zone. But the way Brockton's offense has been able to push the variant around, it's a very tough choice. This is why they are in the big box, Tim. I think uh, George McCabe has probably already decided he's going for it. It's just a question of what play to use to pick up the six yards from the 20-yard line that they need for the first down. The boxers have converted twice on fourth down, and we just saw in the midst of the Zavarian huddle, I think it was Camella, who uh, tested the wind, threw a few blades of grass in the air to uh, check out which direction it's blowing. If he doesn't know which direction the wind is blowing by now, he's not into this game. It's one of the first things you do when you get out to the field. Check the conditions. And now here we go. Zavarian will go for the field goal. I don't agree with the decision right here, Tim. Jim Griffin, junior from Needham, to go for the three with Hasselbeck to hold. The kick is up, and it is good. Wow. Heck of a kick right there. Heck a of a kick. 37-yard field goal from Jim Griffin gets the Hawks on the board. With 6.51 to play in the half. That had another 10 yards to go. Wow. Strong kick. Very impressive. Reminded me of the days of Jimmy Butler and Mark Koleski last year. 
Remember the field goals at BU that won the game against St. John's? That's a heck of a foot. I'm sure the Severian soccer team is upset that he's not playing for them this year. Well, we're proved wrong. We assumed George McKay would go for it with the win and the 14-point deficit. But he obviously had faith in his kicker, Jim Griffin, and uh, Griffin gets the Hawks on the board. But the important by thing is they still need two scores to overcome Brockton. Let's bring one here now. Maybe he just needed something positive to happen. Griffin will do the kicking off, his first kick of the day. With the four boxers ready to receive it, of course. Shaheen is the up man, and uh, Mosley in the middle. Semper Tim. and Bourne back there. Tim, again, the Severian offense did nothing once they got the ball. All their offense was on the kickoff return. Dion Young set up that field goal with the long return on the kick. And Taye Houston had to field that rocket <laughs> of a line drive. That was like he was a shortstop and the ball came uh, screaming down there. Playing the hot corner, Houston showed uh, pretty good poise in turning around to gather that ball in after it bounced off his shoulder pad. So the boxers will have no return on the kick. You know, Taye, if he didn't get hurt be before the season, he could be the starting fullback. Stretch it out, The reason why Mosley was put back there is because Taye Houston had a knee injury in preseason training and he just came back a few weeks ago but you can't take Mosley out he's doing a hell of a job Houston just a junior so we'll see him next year boxers first and 10 from their 27 and the pitch a low pitch to Bourne but he gathers it in and goes Michael Bourne all the way to midfield 23 yards on the option for Bourne that'll push him to 93 yards in the first half. Well, the acceleration on number 28. How is many just times have incredible. we noticed that, Tim? He just, just explodes. Incredible. Not a great pitch. Bourne got to go low for it, but his hands are like, he's got that stick -em on him today. He never once had to break his stride you to know, reach down for that ball. The difference here is Brockton is not letting Severian get outside when the Hawks are on offense. Brockton's going outside at will. Second big carry of the day for Bourne, has the boxers at midfield. Nice play by 79, Mike White wrapped up Belanger. Lucian wasn't going anywhere. Forward progress will net about two yards before Belanger is shoved back to midfield. Mike White, 6'4", 270 pounds out of Canton. And one of uh, a handful of Zavarian players attracting attention from some big college programs. Well, they're saying Camella, Hasselbeck, and White are d a legitimate D1 recruits. Five and a half minutes to play, first half. And Shaheen wants to put it up. Looking for Mosley, he just threw that away. Mosley was covered well by Rodriguez. Good play by Mike Shaheen, very good play. Showing a lot of experience right there. Knew he wasn't going to get anything. Rather than take the loss, just throw it away. That brings up third down, eight for the boxers. And I'll tell you, this is a sports fan's dream this weekend. Everything you could possibly want going on from the World Series getting started to uh, this game, the big high school matchup, the Boston College game for local Eagle fans against Penn State. And uh, for comic relief, we have the Patriots in Miami. But uh, a good number of the locals out here today to watch the boxers battle the number one Severian Hawks. Now that was a quick clock, I'll tell you. Well, a delay of game penalty, the wow. second of the day, first on the boxers. We'll bring up third down 13. Armin Colombo doesn't look like he's going to change his play call either. Uh, he's got about 300 offensive plays in his head. He's been here for so long. I remember talking to him last year. I asked him, how do you remember it all? He says, you remember everything when you've been here as long as I have. 300 offensive plays. How do you pick one out of 300? <laughs> Never mind remember, decide. And Shaheen will go to the air. Long pass over the middle, Semper in triple coverage. Camella, oh. Kennedy, and McLaughlin were all there and just out of Troy's got a reach. Flag, maybe a holding call. Yeah, a holding call on Brockton. I wonder if Severian will take it. That, that gives Brockton another chance. 
Well, with third down 13 in Brockton territory, go. I would anticipate that the boxers would get rid of the ball on fourth down. It is yeah, declined, decline. so it will bring up fourth down. You know, Mike Landers is about 10 yards further than Troy Semper. He almost came up with that. Sure, it was triple coverage. You have triple coverage. You're looking for an interception. Severian was playing Troy Semper. They weren't even looking for the ball. That's the kind of respect that they're giving Semper, though. A speedster. So Alan Bursey, who boomed a few in pregame, with the on wind for too. his first punt of the day with the wind at his back and the dangerous Dion Young set to receive it. Big rush and the kick will get up and stay up. Hope for a bounce. Young will take it, fair catch at his 38 yard line and a good thing, it's a short kick. So the wind obviously is blowing across the field somewhat. First he got it up there and it uh, Stayed only, up there. Only traveled about uh, 20 yards in the air. Like one of my drives off the tee. <laughs> Looks great, didn't go anywhere. Very picturesque. So with 5.19 to play in the half, the boxers leading 14 to three will uh, try to stop the Hawks. Long count for Hasselbeck. And the give to Camella. Greg Camella picks up six. Dan Reardon on the stop. Chris Sykos had Sykos him by the well. legs. Camella's just a bruiser. You know, he plays for the Severian basketball team. You should see him out there. He just looks like he wants to pick people up and move them. You can do that in football, but yeah, not basketball. <laughs> Fantastic athlete. Second down. And a short five. Camella again. And uh, he'll come up about two yards short of first down territory. Psycho's in on the stop once again. His legs never stop running. And the, a runner comparable to Camella is Lucian Belanger. Two big, strong kids. Probably the same physically. Both talented. Both big-time college recruits. Third down two at the Zavarian 47 yard line. They trail by 11. Hasselbeck has two wide receivers. And he'll look for one of them here. The short pass for Rochford, and Brian Rochford just misses it. There's not even close. That quick drop trying to uh, hit Rochford before the coverage from Landers came up field, and Rochford just didn't get the ball. George McCabe not taking any chances here. He's going to pump it away. Again, if no penalties happen here, Brockton should up, end up with some fantastic yardage as a big gust of wind picks up. The wind is now blowing much more towards us on the Brockton uh, sideline. And it feels good in my face, Tim, I'll tell you. <laughs> my hands are white already. <laughs> a whistle just before the snap. Low snap, too. That's a late timeout, I believe, for Severian. Very late. And it's a Brockton timeout. All right. But regardless, still very late. The snap was almost in the hands of punter Hugh Stanton when the whistle blew from the back judge. Billy Devin has done such a great job with the Brockton defense this year. You know, he, Armin Colombo, sure, he's the head coach. He controls the offense. His defensive coordinator has the say on defense and Billy's come up smelling like roses every game after that Wagner game and then in the Wagner game he still came out looking good because of the defensive stands at, at the goal line so a lot of kudos have to go to Billy Devin absolutely and coach Gonzalez in the backfield Dave Foraker Mike Hancock two volunteer coaches Gene Marrow who still scares the living daylights out of out of everyone including adults and kids and Peter Colombo volunteers his time on the offensive side. So we'll try it again. Stanton to kick from around his own 35 yard line. Wind died down a little bit. Yes, it did. And Stanton gets off a good kick. Velios loses it. And it is Zavarian ball, I believe. It is. The Hawks have it. 
as Jeremy Valerino comes up with it. Velios couldn't hang on. Break number one, Severian. Pat was thinking upfield about his return before he got the ball. It was not a terribly high kick, so the coverage was downfield quickly. And uh, three Hawks were around Velios when he mishandled the ball. So a big break for the Hawks, and here they come, trying to close the gap, lead, uh, trailing by 11 with 3.45 to play in the second period. Hasselbeck wants to get it in a hurry. Has Camilla, touchdown! And a flag right at the end of the play as McLaughlin cut out Picard Jack. This one will come back. Oh, An my. unnecessary block as Camella was already sprung for the touchdown, but McLaughlin clipped Picard Jacques, and the touchdown will come back. What a play. Camella coming from left to right. The throw is right in the money. Camella ne had never had the brakes try. Now watch Picard Jacques. Right behind the official. Right, right here, right there. That's a clip. That's going to come back. Severian fans aren't going to like that, but it was so evident. A terribly unnecessary penalty for the Hawks as Picard Jacques had no chance of catching up with Camella. Camella was already spiking the ball. Terrible play. I think the reason that Jacques went down so hard was because he didn't anticipate a block at that point. He knew the play was over with and wasn't uh, prepared for McLaughlin to come, on, come in and cut him down. So it brings up... The first down play, the penalty marched off from the point of the infraction, so it turns into a gain for Zavarian. Kennedy on the ball, uh, carrying the ball for the first time, and is pushed backwards, but picked up about four yards before being uh, sent back. Zavarian really needs a touchdown here. Tim. All right, fellas, let's go, come on. So the Hawks pick up the first down. Ball marked at the 11-yard line. Again, the confusion because the penalty was marched off from the point of the infraction. It did not go back to the line of scrimmage, and the point of the infraction the was line. at the goal line. So first and 10 from the 11-yard line. The Hawks having the touchdown called back on the clipping penalty. Camella will try to get another shot at it, and he'll come close. Clock running down to 2.45 in the second quarter. And Severian doing what Brockton does right now. You got two great running backs in your backfield. Give it to them. Give it to them, and let's see what happens. Kennedy's Gain of five on the play for Camilla down to the six-yard line, where it'll be second and five. And motion on the right side of the line. That's McLaughlin who was called for the clipping penalty and now the tight end moves. He's having a bad series. That'll push the Hawks right back to where they were before the carry by Camella. It'll be second down and 10 from the 11. The clock continues to run, working its way down to two minutes. So a well-played game prior to the last two minutes or so and then the uh, mishandled punt by Velios gave the Hawks good field position. The penalty by McLaughlin negating a Greg Camella touchdown reception. And now the McLaughlin penalty has set the Hawks back five more yards. Hasselbeck with a timeout as he hits the line of scrimmage. The clock stopped with exactly two minutes to play. And Brockton's defense hanging tough. 14 to three, the boxers jumped out in front when Mike Shaheen hit Mike Bourne on fourth down for the touchdown. The kick was no good, but the boxers followed it up. Bourne, a big carry, setting up a Mike Shaheen touchdown. And then the two-point conversion, Shaheen on the fake kick, hitting Lucian Belanger for two points. And Zavarian's only answer has been a 37-yard field goal by Jim Griffin. That was a beauty. To cut the lead to 14 to three. I want to remind you that uh, we'll be on the road again next week as the boxers travel for their first big three matchup of the season facing the Hilltoppers of Durfee down in Fall River. That'll be a 1.30 game. We hope you'll make the trip down and join us for that one.
the boxers open up their very brief big three conference schedule. And another reminder that we'll be selecting our Cape Cod Cafe most valuable player at the conclusion of this game. As we do after every game, the Cod has upped the total of $432 on the season that they've contributed to the Brockton High School Athletic Fund. If you were uh, watching our coverage of last week's game with Fitchburg, you heard from the owner, the proprietor, James Jamoulis. Very nice man. Explaining how the whole points, the Dollars for Points program came about and why. And uh, encouraging other local businesses as he should to contribute to uh, the he's, Boxer F he's program. He's just a small business owner. There's major businesses in Brock, and I'd like to see them get involved with this too. So with two minutes to play in the half, a second down 10 play from the 11-yard line. Camella, deep pitch, and turns, spins, and is just short of the end zone. Camella was hit in the backfield, and a Boxer is slow to get up. Jason Mosley. It is Jason Mosley who had hit Camella and got the worst of it, apparently. The question now is whether it's a first down. No. Nope. Well, you can't tell from the scoreboard. It still says second and 10. I'd say it's got to be a, a first down. They're on the one yard line. No measurement, but the one was where they had to get. Now, perhaps they'll bring out the chains. They will. Camella got to the one yard line. And it'll be a question of whether it's third down and very short or first down and goal. Looks like it's first it's down. It's a first down. Easy. So four shots from the one yard line for the Hawks to try to close the gap here. Trailing by 11. Remember the three backs, Rodriguez, the uh, undersized fullback. And I don't see Kennedy in there now. I think it's Dion Young who's taken his place to join Camella in the backfield. It's Camella for the carry. He leaps and scores. Over the top. Good hang time on Greg Camella. And he's in for the score to make it a 14-9 ball game. Marion makes Brockton pay for their first mistake of the game. Watch Greg Kamala here, talented kid, right over the top. He wasn't going to take any chances. Knew he had to get in there. The car jock met him up there. Kamala took a heck of a hit there. Jim Griffin on to attempt the extra point to make it a four-point game. kick is good 14 to 10 with 127 to play and the boxers after jumping out to the quick lead and showing signs of uh, a runaway have watched as the Hawks have crawled back into this one trailing now by just four in the final minute and a half of the first half but Brockton is still dominating Tim it would be something if Brockton had a letdown the reason why Severian got where it is right now in this game is because of the turnover. You have to believe if Brockton didn't turn it over, they probably would have been deep in Severian's end by now. Their offense has been really unstoppable so far. Well, we look back two weeks ago to the St. John's prep game when the boxers came out flying, ran out to a 21 to nothing lead and appeared to be uh, well on their way to a blowout. And then a bit of a let up in the second half allowed St. John's two scores, ended up a comfortable 28 to 13 victory but nevertheless there was a scare there as the boxer offense slowed down just a bit the goal here in the final minute and a half is to uh, show at least some signs that they're not about to let that happen again even if they don't score in this final drive the boxers would like to uh, show some good ball movement but to get that momentum back Shaheen will field the Jim Griffin kick and give it to Mike Bourne, who's been magnificent today. And is very up from behind. No call. I can't believe it. The field judge is right in front of him. Number 14, Jim Griffin. The kicker himself. And 44, Jacob Conka. They tackled him by the mask. Wow. Mike Bourne. Very exciting today. 
Good return. Warren making everybody on the Zaverian side hold their breath every time he gets the ball. Don't count on Armin Colombo sitting on it here either. He wants more points on the scoreboard. He has Velios and Landers in as receivers. But still has three in the backfield, so he could go either way. And it is Mike Warren. Warren just slips up at the 45-yard line of Zaverian. Rochford will get credit for the tackle, but uh, didn't get out, out of bounds. Michael just lost his footing. The clock runs down to 103. It'll be a first down, so the clock will stop long enough to move the chains. And that run put Mike Bourne over the century mark. 103 yards on eight rushes. <laughs> nice average there. And now the clock's starting again at one minute. Boxers are at the 43-yard line of Zavarian, and they'll take a timeout. Or perhaps they won't. The clock has stopped now at 58 seconds as a conversation takes place between the officials and the boxer sideline. I think the boxers uh, trying to convince the officials perhaps that Bourne went out of bounds, but the clock now running. Now it's stopped. the wind picks up. Belanger. Down to the 36-yard line, and Armand Colombo will take a timeout. Brian McLaughlin tripped Lucian Belanger up just enough. And the clock continues to run they gotta after put the timeout. Some more time up there. Nothing like a home field advantage. They'll, they'll put about 10 seconds back in the clock. Well, well, probably five or six at least. It stopped when it should have run. It ran referee, when it should have stopped. The referee is signaling put about four or five seconds back up there. Well, yeah, it, had, there it had run down to 38 seconds, and so now the clock reads 54, but I don't believe that would be accurate That should either. be maybe 44 seconds, I believe. <laughs> so the clock's still reading 54 seconds as the boxers take their time out. They're at the 37-yard uh, line of Zavarian. Nice joke up here in the stands. They're a Catholic school. They won't cheat. <laughs> Lucian almost broke this one. Who was it? Cam Camello was in on a tackle. Brockton showing once again, though, even though Severian came back 14 to 10, they've been virtually unstoppable on offense. Costly turnover. Terrific game going on here in Westwood. Number one, Zavarian Hawks, and the number three, Brockton Boxers. Fighting it out, the Boxers holding the four-point edge. Bourne has some room and just stumbles. Was about to go one-on-one -on -one with Brendan Kennedy and lost his footing. Tripped over that white line, I guess. Now the Boxers letting the clock run. Finally, nope. We heard a whistle, but it was not a timeout. Mike Shaheen sent back in as we hit 30 seconds. Third down and five. And 20 seconds to play. Mosley for the first down. And more, and they'll get the timeout with 13 seconds to play. 13 seconds on the clock. Mosley picking up the first down taking it inside the 30 to the 27. Nice reverse direction. Everybody again expecting to go right. Mosley cut left, big hole, nice game. Well, this, is, this has been uh, as billed. Two very good teams going head to head. We haven't mentioned yet today that the, the team separating the two at the top of the Eastern Mass standings, according to the Boston Globe rankings. Uh, Waltham, another group of Hawks, I, they're still undefeated. I have to think whoever wins this game will have a solidified stake as number one. Well, it brings up an interesting issue because should the boxers win this game, they'll be uh, five and one. And if Waltham wins their game this weekend, they'll remain undefeated. And they'll say, enough, hey, we haven't lost. Yeah, but we should still be. Yeah, but they're playing the another one of those greater Boston League powerhouses. I think maybe Everett this week, or they beat Everett last week. They've, they've beaten Everett already. Yeah. They've beaten Somerville. They're, maybe they're playing another powerhouse in Cambridge or 
Arlington or Somerville or whoever. Waltham wants to be number one. They should start scheduling Brockton again. Uh, that's a subject for another day. We've got a big situation for the boxers here. Just 14 seconds on the clock. Shaheen faking left and now looking for Mosley right, but it's well out of his reach on the screen pass, and that'll stop the clock with nine seconds to play. Boxers are 27 yards away. Adam Buckland, the linebacker from Norfolk, a bit shaken up on the play, and he'll head for the sidelines. His right arm or right shoulder appears to be injured, and he'll be replaced by Jacob Kunkka. Those two uh, will share the time at the linebacker spot regardless, so not really a, a second stringer coming in for George McCabe. Six seconds, time for a play or two, depending on the calls and well, the results. Gonna, they're going to go for the end zone on this one. Three wide receivers. Bourne goes out, and Shaheen will have to take the timeout. The clock, of course, not running after the incomplete pass, but Shaheen saw something he wasn't prepared for and took the timeout. Your ideal play to go with the elements would be for Shaheen to roll out left and throw right because the ball should carry very nicely. So if Shaheen does roll out, it should be to the left. Watch that. They've, he's got a two wide receiver set to the left. You gotta believe they're gonna run either a post or a slant to the right corner of the end zone. Of course, the thing we sometimes don't take into account when you're dealing with a windy day is that it can be just as difficult exactly, to throw with the yeah. wind as against it. You it's gotta still, have that feather touch. It still interferes with uh, what you would normally do. I mean, think about uh, shooting baskets in basketball. You get used to throwing it the same way every time you throw a free throw. If you uh, put wind behind you, it's just as difficult as the it old, is if you put wind in front the of you. The old Kentucky windage, that's what it's called. We'll see what happens here, though. Six seconds to play. The boxers leading 14 to 10. They had a 14-0 lead and have watched Zavarian climb back into it via a Brockton mistake. A boxer turnover on special teams setting up the touchdown for the Hawks. I don't Brockton think would like to add to the lead before we go to the locker rooms. Zavarian dropping back into deep coverage. The pass over the middle intended for Velios, and he lunges ahead, won't get it. Shaheen gets rattled by Mike White. He's all right. They'll and have the time for one more, though. One second on the clock after the incompletion. White came in late, and now they'll say that's the half. So the confusion with the clock in the final minute continues right up until the gun goes off and we go to the locker rooms, the boxers jumping out to a 14 to nothing lead and then allowing the field goal and the touchdown to make it a 14 10 ball game. Lots of great football coming up for you. Plus our halftime stats, stay with us. I'm Edward Asner. You can see them at the finest places, well-bred, highly trained, and diligent at their work. They're guide dogs, enabling blind people to enjoy greater freedom and independence. And the law permits them everywhere that's open to the public. To learn more, call the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind toll-free, 1-800-548-4337. That's 1-800-548-4337. Mike Shaheen getting ready to lead the attack as the boxers will get the ball to start the second half here at Westwood. Leading Zavarian by four, a 14 to 10 lead. The boxers opening up with two scores before Zavarian broke the ice, a 37 yard field goal. And then the touchdown set up by the boxer turnover on special teams. Uh, but generally the boxer offense has had their way as you see the numbers on the first half. Uh, Brockton uh, for 168 total yards, just 52 for Zavarian. And there you see the, the surprising score at 14 to 10 when you look at the uh, comparison in well, the yardage. I don't think the scoreboard reflects the actual game. Brockton, they've got penalized for that one turnover. Brockton controlled the actual play of the first half. And if they can do, if they can play mistake free football, they're going to come out of here with an easy win. They've dominated. See the rushing yards, 42 rushing 
for Severian, 137 for Brockton. That's big time football right there. And if they can just keep on doing that, play shutout football, Severian would have nothing but a field goal if it were not for Pat Valios' turnover. That was, that was the longest gain or the longest series that Severian's had all day, and it was 23 yards. Even before the half ended, you saw Brockton, they got the ball deep in their end. They ended up in scoring range. So Severian's got to step up their play a large amount to overcome the deficit. The captain's back at the center of the field just to uh, formalize what will happen. Four captains for Severian. Greg Camella, Brendan Kennedy, Hugh Stanton, and Mike White, all fine players. As you see, Armin Colombo, Bill Devin on the boxer sideline. And uh, Brockton does want to come out quickly. And I think they will Put some come points out on the board. And show Zavarian that uh, they are still in control despite just the four point lead. Well, a uh, cheer coming up from both sides of the stands a few sure. moments ago when the PA announcer gave the current Boston College football score. At the time, it was 35 to 10, BC over Penn State. Of course, that'll be. Uh, a final by the time you uh, <laughs> see this telecast. 24 hours too late. Nonetheless, uh, a lot of VC fans in the stands hearing that surprising score and adding to the uh, to the uh, pleasant environment here on this lovely fall day. It has been breezy, but the sun's been shining throughout, and everyone's in a festive mood for this one. Severian will have the win for the final quarter of play. Boxers would like to make that. Uh, academic if they could have a big third quarter. Let's hope it is. Zavarian really needs this victory. They've got a tough game next weekend when they play the resurgent BC High Eagles who are battling St. John's Prep of Danvers today. So it could be a different picture in the Catholic Conference by next weekend. Right now the boxers would like to make it a different picture in the Eastern Mass standings. Jim Griffin to kick off kicks a low liner that is fielded by Steve Pina. He'll just gather it in and go straight ahead. Bangs heads with Jeremy Ballerino, and the boxers will get pretty fair field position near their 40-yard line. I like that. Steve Pina, before he even took a step, he made sure he had the ball and tucked it under. Two hands around it before he even took a step. Didn't want to cause another turnover. So the boxer offense led by Michael Bourne, who's gone over 100 yards in the first half with some sparkling carries. And one big pass play, plus the passing touchdown for Mike Shaheen. He's had a good half as well. Mike Bourne finds a big hole on the right side, opened up by Brent Warren, and gets uh, better than five yards on the carry. That's all we need. He's been averaging about eight yards a carry this season. Went up near 12 yards for the first half. Watch number 28, picking and choosing, sees a little hole there. It's a deadly combination, a line that can open up holes and a quick back who can uh, get through them before they close. The scoreboard, is, the scoreboard is now out of commission. It's uh, gone disco on us, now it's back to, uh, <laughs> back to normal. As Belanger pushes ahead to the 50 yard line for the first down. Nice push by Lucian. Again, we mentioned he doesn't have the advantage of having two blockers in front of him, so most of the yardage he gets once he's past the original line is all leg drive. Watch Lucian right here. Watch the legs. They never stop running, never stop moving. So a minute gone in the third quarter. The boxers with a first and 10 from the 50. Shaheen falls down, and he'll be down two yards deep Again, that uh, the footing is pretty treacherous. You know, they played a soccer game on the field before the football game, and I didn't see any soccer players slipping and sliding. Uh, there have been at least four players who've stumbled and lost their footing in the going so far. Shaheen for the two-yard loss will bring up second and 12. Boxers stay with the run formation. And it's Mosley. Jason Mosley breaks the tackle. 
and down to the 41 yard line. Again, he's starting right and then changing left and it's throwing the Siberian defense for loops. Saw how strong Jason Mosley is on that run. He got stopped about seven yards deep, bounced off that tackle. Nice camera work here. Now watch Jason protecting the ball at all costs. Ball in the outside arm. Now he shook off that tackle and he gains another five or six yards. Nice effort. Third down, a long one from the Zaverian 41. And Shaheen keeps it again. Mike Shaheen for four yards. And he's been effective every time he's carried the ball with the exception of the slip a few moments ago. He's picked up a couple of big first downs and a touchdown carrying it. Just to show how strong the Brockton offensive line is, when a quarterback takes it, he's supposed to get maybe a yard. Shaheen is getting three, four, five yards on a little keeper. That's not supposed to happen if you're on the defense. Temperature continues to drop as predicted this afternoon. You don't have to tell me that. And the wind <laughs> continues to blow. First and 10. Zavarian showing blitz and coming. Born trying to get out of the hole. Won't get much, if anything. Nice job of playing off the blitz. They got outside, but they just didn't get the blockers out there. Ballerino on the stop. Michael Senior from Franklin. Michael looking to get outside, just nothing there. No loss, so not too bad of a play. Brings up second and 10 from the, uh, about the 38 yard line of Zaverian. Jason Mosley down the sidelines, close to first down yardage. This is, I, I think, about the best we've seen Jason Mosley run. Well, not, he, that he's, not that he's had a lot of yardage, but he's made the, the yards for himself. Very effective. A lot of the defenses are looking for Bourne to get the ball, and Shaheen does such a nice job of hiding his handoffs. And again, Mosley is changing direction so often, he's either going left and then coming back, or going right and then going left. Very tricky for a defense to pick up on it. Gain of eight for Jason, brings up third down two. Belanger, the first down specialist, will get it again. And more. Look at the leg drive. Again, you see a couple of Brockton linemen down there with him. Brockton's line, very effective. You know, Lucian going, Belanger, in, running going into, into halftime, you and I were talking. I thought that Brockton dominated the ball game in the first half, and they've come out and done the same thing. If Brockton doesn't turn the ball over, I can't see them leaving here with the defeat in their hands. Well, that is the key, avoiding the mistakes, because in spite of their overwhelming uh, statistical advantage, the boxers led by just 11 at the half. The fake to Belanger. Born behind Mosley, now goes on his own and picks up a few. Marcus Rodriguez on the stop. Again, Tim, we see Mike Bourne cutting. Picked up the block of Mosley on Kennedy and then did his own stuff. Look, look at Shaheen. Perfect pitch, perfect pitch. You know how tough that is to do? Now watch him. He's got the blocker out there with Kennedy and Mosley. Mosley took down Kennedy. Mike cut back in for a nice, sizable gain. Now the scoreboard out of commission again. But it was a gain of five on the play for Mike Bourne. Second down five. And it's Bourne. Michael Bourne inside the tent. Mighty Mike Bourne today. 123 yards on 13 rushes, Tim. Wow. Those are numbers right there, I'll tell you. And that included at least one where he slipped in the backfield. Sure. And lost his footing. So about 10 yards a pop for Michael Bourne. And he's got the boxers first and goal. Bourne. Knocking at the door. Lucian Belanger does such a nice job of faking running with the ball. I look there, without the cameras watching the monitor, I think that Belanger has the ball. But then Shaheen pulls back again, 
Number 35 is the first in, and now watch Michael Bourne, untouched until he's five yards deep. Watch the second effort by Mike Bourne. Never All the way up. to the two, second down and goal for Shaheen and the Boxers. Shaheen keeps it, and he'll come up short, but not by much. And some shoving after the play. Shaheen races out of the uh, scrum to catch up with Coach Colombo and call the next play. The boxer's third down and less than a yard from third, pay dirt, leading 14 to three. Can't tell, it looks like about the half yard line. Watch, watch for Mike Shaheen again. Or maybe Bourne. I think Belanger is my call here. He's so effective getting that short yardage. It is Lucian Belanger, touchdown! You got me there, Tim. You got me there. Nothing fancy. Power football as we've seen it all year long. When he's needed one, two, three, four yards on third down or even fourth, Belanger has been there all season long since being inserted in that backfield in week number two against Plymouth. 13 plays, 62 yards. And Alan Bercy to put a cap on it. Chip shot. Wow. <laughs> it's no, no good. And Michael wow. Shaheen can't believe it. Wide Referee right. Referee indicating rough. wide right. Mike Von George is behind the goal post with his arms still up. He can't believe it. But for the second time today, those short goal posts become an issue as the kick is called wide that right. Looked, that looked good. I mean, from our vantage, it was certainly high enough. It was like a nine iron shot. Wow. So the score remains 20 to 10. As the boxers do just what they have to do, coming out and scoring on the opening drive of the second half. And with that score, 24 more dollars go from the Cape Cod Cafe to the Brockton High School Athletic Fund, putting us up to $456 on the season. As you watch the kick again. Really? I didn't even see the ball in that. No, I never play. did either. <laughs> Mike Von George has made his way to the Broxer sideline to explain his perspective on the play. But regardless, it is a 20 to 10 lead for the Boxers on the opening drive of the second half. I they scored on their first possession in the first. They score on their first possession here in the second and open up the 10-point lead. We'll have to rely on the officials for the time from here on in with the scoreboard clock out. Kennedy watches it go by. Camella picks it up. And he stays on his feet across the 30-yard line. Now the Brockton defense needs a big stand right here. They've been doing it all day long. Peter Julius, Larry Stroud, Kenny Legault, 41, 42, and 43 on the stop for Brockton at the 31-yard line. Nice run back by Camello. He's such a strong runner, low to the ground, really tough to bring down. He's got tree trunks for legs. So Matt Hasselbeck, the son of former Patriot tight end Don Hasselbeck has his work cut out for him. Trailing by 10, the Hawks have not led at any point today. Camella in motion and looking for Camella is Hasselbeck. A high pass, this will be trouble. Intercepted by Landers. Oh my, what a hard, and Hasselbeck is hurt. Hasselbeck is hurt. That was like a quail floating up there. Not a Dan quail, but a bird. I thought Landers would call for the fair catch. He could have, I'll tell you. And Camella didn't see how bad the pass was. He didn't come back for it. Look at that pass. It looks like a punt. Mike Landers did the pass. I'm not to, sure. Uh, stop the Fitchburg drive. His fourth interception on the year. And I'll and tell you something. Mike ought to go and uh, shake the hand of Dan Reardon because Reardon's pressure on Hasselbeck forced that high throw. 
and it enabled Landers to camp under that one for the interception. The turnover sets up the Boxers first and 10 at the 49 yard line, their own. Michael Bourne. Flag goes down as Bourne gets about four and appeared to be shaken up and now bounces right back up. This may be holding on the boxers. It looks like it. Whenever a flag is thrown like that, you know it's holding on the offense. That was what you call a power sweep. Let's see if we can pick up the culprit here. Belange is over there. I'm not sure. Maybe Jason Mosley. Or was it a clip? I don't know. It's a 15-yarder. Personal foul. Maybe a legal block. At any rate, the ball back to the 43-yard line of Brockton. It'll be first down and long from there. First and 15. They lead by 10 after the Lucian Belanger touchdown. And the interception by Mike Landers, his fourth of the year. Bourne, uh-oh, breaks two tackles. Can't break the third as Dion Young comes up to put the hit on it at the 45-yard line. Mike Bourne, very impressive. Could have gone down for a loss right there. Stayed on his feet. Jeremy Ballerino got into the backfield and Michael just slipped underneath the attempted tackle. Right here, there's Ballerino and then a second attempted tackle. Bourne gets away and manages to pick up two yards on the carry. So second down, 13 now. Mosley, he'll get about three. McLaughlin on the stop along with number 70, that's uh, Neil Minahan. It'll be third and long, third and about 11, I guess they're gonna spot it at. Definite passing situation, Pina and Bernard, the two bookends come out. Landers, Valio, Semper should be in there. I didn't, I'm not sure if I see Troy Semper in there. Yeah, he'll go top of the screen. Yep. Valio. Along with Velios and Landers is uh, near side in front of the, Brock, the Brockton bench on third down 11. Camella on the blitz. Shaheen pressured, throws it into the hands. And that is Adam Buckland. The senior from Norfolk, Massachusetts, anticipating the play and intercepting the pass. The second turnover of the day for the boxers. Right Buckland into the hands. stepping in front of Landers, but uh, probably an ill-advised pass. Again, Shaheen never looked off his primary receiver. Everyone knew it was going that way. So the Hawks get it back. Brendan Kennedy for three yards to the Brockton 46-yard line. Patrick Velios, Lucian Belanger on the stop. Again, we talked about playing mistake-free football. So far, both teams have come out and made crucial mistakes. So Landers picked off the pass to get the ball for the Boxers, and then he's the victim. The intended receiver on the interception by Buckland. Javarian with the ball in Brockton territory, trailing by 10. Now Camella, following the block of Dion Young, gets his balance and carries it down inside the 20. Great, great effort by number 34. Finally seeing what all the fuss is about with Greg Camella as he gets a chance to break into the open field. He did this last year, too. He's just a real strong runner, very tough to bring down. Can't go high on him. You got to go low, but it's tough. Look at how low to the ground he runs. Great, Great balance. balance. Outstanding balance to stay on his feet and pick up the first down. Sloppy tackling on the part of Brockton. We'll assume now that the clock is official. It's running down to 1.05 here in the third quarter. Hasselbeck to the left side, throws it behind Rochford, who can't hang on. And Brian Rochford's had a tough day. Hasselbeck fires that ball in there. Rochford, the senior from Needham, got one off the fingertips in the end zone, had another one go through his hands on a similar play in the first half. And now this one 
was behind him and a bullet, as Steve said. Nicely thrown. And it looked ball, as if he though. had it, but uh, just couldn't quite hang on. So it'll stop the clock with 59 seconds to play in the third quarter and bring up the second down and 10. The ball at the Brockton 28 yard line. And the whistle for delay of game. Again, every time Severian gets in these pressured situations, it's the third time a penalty was called on the Hawks. Hasselbeck was calling out instructions to teammates. Audibleizing, possibly. They may have been calling a play, and uh, it cost them five yards. Certainly no help to the Severian cause. That'll bring up second down and 15 at the 32 of Brockton, just inside the 33. The Boxers lead it 20 to 10. Touchdowns by Mike Bourne, Mike Shaheen, and Lucian Belanger. A fake to Kennedy, Hasselbeck rolling left. Looking again for Rochford, and again it's through the hands. Not even close to the receiver. Thrown like a rocket. Rochford didn't even have his hands up there to receive the ball. Hasselbeck cutting right through this win. He's a big, strong kid. Reminds me of Mark Hansel last year. Looks pretty comfortable in that pocket for a guy who doesn't get to throw the ball an awful lot. Good protection. And he rolls out here. Gets set and Rochford Bailey had his hands up for it. Third down and 15. The Boxer defense. Tough as they always are when pressed in their own territory. The pass Whoa. complete to Cabela. Bernard and Semper on the tackle, but it's a first down for Zavarian. Heck of a play by Matt Hasselbeck and Greg Camello. That's the one, the same play that Camello scored on, the one that was called back. Just when you think there's nothing there, Camello comes out of the left. Nice crossing pattern, nice pressure. Brockton blitzed on that one. Lucian Belanger was on the blitz. They almost got him. Hasselbeck looking for Camello all the way. Big play. Clock stopped for the first down with 42 seconds left in the third quarter. Camella over the right side. Knocked off balance by Jason Mosley and then gets a couple of extra yards out of it. Down to the six yard line. Camella has eight rushes for 44 yards. So they've been keeping him in containment pretty Much well. Much of that on this, uh, in this third quarter on a couple of carries. The Hawks, as a team, had only 42 yards on the ground in the first half. Final seconds of the third period. Second down and goal. Camella. Close to the goal line. That'll do it for the third, though. A flag down at the end of the play will get the official signal before we change ends. It's a face mask on the boxers. It'll be half the distance. So about a foot. <laughs> a matter of inches, really. As Camella got down near the one yard line. So they'll put it at the foot and a half line and turn it around for the fourth quarter of action. The Boxers coming up with the only score of the quarter to open up the lead to 10, but Zavarian looking to put some points on the board here. We'll have the fourth quarter for you in just a moment. <laughs> The Boxer fans cheering on the defense as they try to stop a nearly impossible situation. Second down and goal from just inches away. He's trying to preserve a 10 point lead as we go to the fourth quarter here at Zavarian. Well, the Boxers once again travel to Fall River next Saturday for their first big three matchup against Durfee. Zavarian will play BC High undefeated going into this week's action. Their game against St. John's Prep of Danvers. They're trying to make a contest out of that Catholic Conference. That could change very easily. St. John's when they're on, watch out. Really? In fact, that game was 10.30 this morning. I see some of the BC High players here already. Yeah, you're right. Hasselbeck to Camella. Fumble in the end zone. And Zavarian has it for the touchdown. 
81, Brian McLaughlin fell on it. Cabela coughed it up, but McLaughlin was there. And the touchdown for McLaughlin, apparently. They haven't signaled what's happening here. Well, the official nearest the ball signaled the touchdown right away. What a break for Severian. Try to determine how close Camella was to the goal line when he lost control of the ball. He got popped right at the line of scrimmage. And Hasselbeck's gonna go for two here. They're going for two. They trail by four after the touchdown. And a quick change of formation. Hasselbeck, the whistle blows. Illegal Rockton. procedure, perhaps? Or, I, or I'm not out. sure if Rockton called timeout. Timeout out. by Zaverian, and Hasselbeck can't believe it. <laughs> that was an awful <laughs> the, late timeout. The quarterback didn't know his team had called a timeout. Doesn't the quarterback have to call it, or did one of the running backs call it? I didn't see. No, Brockton called the timeout. All right, the official made the wrong signal then. The referee signaling a Zavarian timeout, but the boxers called it. That's the second time today that the defense of Brockton has called a quick timeout just before the snap, apparently. As the Hawks tried to go for two, and the change in formation apparently is what uh, led the defense to call the timeout. You know, George McCabe thinking that if it stays like this, if he can get to 18, he's got a strong field goal kicker. He'll be with the win. That's exactly right. What you, you know, got here is a, is a statement that he's playing for the win rather yeah. than the tie. No, he's. I mean, there's a lot of football to go. Nearly 11 minutes, of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. Absolutely a lot. But of uh, an extra point here would mean a Jim Griffin field goal could tie the game late. The two-point conversion would mean a Zavarian one-point lead on a Watch field goal. Watch this break. McLaughlin falls on it. No Brockton defenders actually knew it was a fumble until it was a little bit too late. So Zavarian setting up for the two with uh, three in the backfield and then sending them all out into passing formation, leaving Hasselbeck on his own with about five targets. And now they set back up with Rodriguez and Kennedy in the backfield and Camella in the slot along with Rochford on the left side. Rolling right, Hasselbeck, under pressure. Hits Camella, and it's good. The ball's good. not in the end zone. The boxers are protesting that Camella reached back out of the end zone to catch the ball. The ball wasn't in the end zone. The ball has to cross the line. Oh, my. Tough officiating right there. And remember, in high school ball, when your knees hit the ground, you're down. Even though Camella had not been touched, had he rolled into the end zone, it still would not count. His feet were in the end zone. You can see right there. He's about a yard outside of the end zone. Tough call. They're getting all the breaks right now. And for the second time today, the turnover proves costly for the boxers. In the first half, the fumble on the punt return gave Zaverian great field position and led to their first touchdown. And here, the interception by Adam uh, Adam Bucklin on the pass by Shaheen, setting up the Zaverian score and the controversial two-point conversion. So 20 to 18 is our score with just nine seconds off the clock here in the fourth quarter. This game's had a little bit of everything. And has been a great one for uh, the fans on both sides. Jim Griffin on to kick it off. He's kicked a couple of short line drives and he'll do it again. This one will bounce down to Shaheen, gets a nice big hop. Fakes to Bourne, hits Mosley with the handoff and Jason Mosley is wrapped up by Rodriguez and by Conca and by John Bussey. As the boxers get the ball back, looking to extend the lead once more. The Brockton diamond formation in the backfield. A big hop for Shaheen. 
gave him plenty of time to make a, a decision on this one. Mike Vaughn with the fake, Mosley right up the middle. Boxers begin the drive at their own 27-yard line. Leading by two, they've led the entire game. But Severian keeps cutting into that lead. Warren good for about five. McLaughlin on the tackle. And Marcus Rodriguez, after the tackle, held his hands up as if to say, I didn't do anything, which well, is usually a clear indication that he did something. I'm watching the tackles after. It looked like there was a possible late hit on the kickoff on Jason Mosley and Severian just putting an exclamation point on it. I didn't do anything, Ralph. Maybe that's a bad news because the referee's probably going to be watching him now. Gain of about four for Bourne, so second down and six. And this is Mosley, Jason Mosley into the open field. And Dion Young trying to strip the ball away, but big strong Jason Mosley hangs on for the first down. Four tacklers it took down to bring Jason Mosley down. And that gives Brockton a lot of breathing room. Great effort by Mosley, particularly when Dion Young went for the ball, and with three other tacklers on him, it would have been easy enough for Mosley to lose his grip. Big first down carry for Mosley, out to the 46 of Brockton. Nice effort. And once again, four different ball carriers have done the job for the boxers today. This time it is Belanger, Lucian Belanger, breaking leg tackles and picking up another first down. Marion has only stopped Brockton twice today. Alan Brucey's only had to punt twice. Well, he punted once, and they got a turnover the other time. They've yet to prove to me that they have a top-flight defense, and Brockton has done virtually whatever they wanted to, and it's continuing right here where they need it to continue. You're right. The boxers have punted the ball away once, thrown one interception, and had the first half run out on them. They've scored on their other three possessions and have moved the ball with ease just about every time. Mike Bourne. Michael Bourne. First down, Brockton. Three consecutive first downs by three different ball carriers just eating up the yardage against the Hawk defense. 148 yards on 17 rushes for Mike Bourne. Terrific day. Every time he gets the ball, you expect him now to pick up first down yardage, and he, he answers. Think he wanted to make a statement today? He made it in bold letters so far. How about that offensive line, though? We always talk about the running backs without the big hogs in front. The very 30-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Mosley in motion to block for Bourne, and Michael Bourne with some help. Nice Hit by Rodriguez downfield. Rodriguez made a nice play playing off of Lucian Belanger's block that time. Belanger had the tough task of actually blocking two blue shirts. Picked one of them. Rodriguez was the unchosen, and he made the stop on Brockton. And Severian has seen enough. They need a timeout to regroup here as the boxers continue to chew up yardage. And the clock, 8.18 to play. The boxer lead is two. A lot of Brockton pride displayed on the sidelines here this afternoon and reminds us about the Brockton Pride Night coming up, the second annual Brockton Pride Night, which will be held on Friday, November the 6th at Christos 2. It's a, it's a great event uh, brought to you by the Boys and Girls Clubs of Brockton with entertainment by the Brockton High School Jazz Band. Dick Johnson will be the guest soloist that night. The Haitian Dance Group will be there, some gospel singers, the Psalms 1 group. Uh, a dance group uh, called Grupo Bomba y Plena, Alfie O'Shea and Lee's Unit. We'll be doing some Irish uh, songs for Nice you. read, Tim. And uh, some guitarists from Puerto Rico really is a, a celebration of Brockton's cultural diversity. At Cristo Sue, featuring an Italian buffet on Friday, November the 6th, the ticket price is $20, very reasonable for the buffet and all that entertainment. Tickets can be purchased at Stillman Sims Tire on Warren Avenue in Brockton, the CM Petty Market, at 216 Belmont Street, the Boys and uh, Girls Clubs of Brockton also on Warren Avenue, and Preston's Market at 75 Main Street. That's all coming up for you, the second annual Brockton Pride Night on Friday, November the 6th. Second down and six for the boxers. 
inside the 30-yard line of Zavarian. They've done it all on the ground on this drive. It is Bourne, big hole over the left side. Michael Bourne, touchdown! That's the exclamation point for Mike Bourne's statement today. Wow! A huge hole from the left side. <laughs> 27 yards or thereabouts once again. The, uh, well, I, I said 30, let's call it 27, Tim. Wow. The yard markers are difficult to read down there, but Bourne and Shaheen Bobbles the high snap, can't get it down, and for the third time today, the boxers will be unable to convert the extra point attempt. So the lead remains at eight, 26 to 18. The boxers answering the score of Zavarian. And with that touchdown by Michael Bourne, the Cape Cod Cafe dollars for points program jumps up once again now up to $480 on the season, 24 on that score, $480 from the Cape Cod Cafe to the Brockton High School Athletic Fund. And a reminder that we'll be selecting our Cape Cod Cafe most valuable player at the conclusion of this game. 8-12 to play, the boxer lead is 26 to 18 after Michael Bourne's 27 yard touchdown carry. Mike Bourne's 19 rushes, 180 yards. Wow, that's a day. Second touchdown of the day for Bourne. The first one coming on a 13 yard pass from Mike Shaheen on the boxers first possession. They came out of the second half, scored on their possession to uh, extend the lead, surrendered the touchdown to Zavarian after the turnover, but have come right back and scored again, 26 Zavarian, to 18. Zavarian hasn't done a thing on defense except surrender points. Bercy's kick, a line drive fielded by Camilla, going wide right now. Tripped up, the first to hit him was Danny Shreve, a nice leg tackle by Shreve, number 20. Slowed Camilla down, and the big back able to get out across the 35 yard line. He is a bruiser though. Look at how low to the ground he is. He punches over in front. Very tough to bring down. Now here's the test for Zavarian. Their first drive of this half stopped by a Michael Landers interception. Their second one was set up by an interception of their own. They have yet to get an offensive possession and score on it. Camilla to throw the oh, left hand and it's Rashford wide open. And it's caught. Landers. Comes back to make the tackle, but a perfectly executed halfback option. Mc George McCabe always seems to pull something out of his bag of tricks whenever he faces Brockton. To the 25 yard line of Brockton. I didn't even know Camelo was left handed. Neither did I. Nice makes arm, a, too. Makes a difference when you're defensing a play to know whether the guy has a chance to throw from that side of the field. Camella showing a good, strong arm and getting the Hawks down inside the 25-yard line. They trail by just eight. Kennedy breaking free. Brendan Kennedy hits his own man and then turns back to the middle of the field inside the 10-yard line. They haven't called his number too many times today. You have to wonder why. Very exciting runner. That's only his fifth run. Kennedy, the Hawk captain from Hanover, with a 15-yard carry. Now remember, three missed extra points, two that went wide, one that was controversial, a third one where uh, Shaheen was never able to get the ball down, and the boxer lead remains at eight. A Zavarian touchdown and two-point conversion would tie this game. Hasselbeck takes a timeout. 7.14 left on the clock. Very Throughout exciting. the day, the boxers have dominated, but the big play here by Zavarian gets them within striking distance. It's 
been a thriller today. Definitely football weather, Tim. Here we're going to take another look at the halfback option. Camilla getting the ball. Nice letting chuck. It loose. Rochford, who's had trouble catching the ball today. Well, that was, I mean, if he loses catch. this one, it's back to JV, I think, for Brian JV, Rochford. JV, probably off the team completely. Mike Landers completely faked, as was most of the team, on that option play. In no position to make the play. That's a, that could be a game breaker, a play like that. The offense has struggled all day for Severian. And uh, look at the impact it had right away, as on the very next play, Brendan Kennedy comes up with a big 15-yard carry. It's first and goal from the 10-yard line. Kennedy again. Five yards, Troy Semper on the stop. Again, Brockton not letting Severian get outside. They want to contain him and let Lucian Belanger and the rest of the Brockton backfield make the tackles. They'll mark Kennedy down at the six, so it's a gain of four. Second down and goal from the six. <laughs> Camella, no Kennedy again. Inside the five, but short of the end zone. And the boxers think they have the ball. Troy Semper was up and jumping. I'm not sure what happened in tight. Jason Persampieri getting up, walking a little gingerly. Now he's just looking for the defensive signals from Billy Devon. So Kennedy gets halfway there to the three-yard line. It'll be third and goal from there. And Calls now McCabe, two and a half. McCabe takes out Kennedy. Kennedy out, replaced by Dion Young, who's in the backfield with Rodriguez and Camella. It's Camella, Greg Camella. Stopped just short of the end zone on fourth down. Bringing up fourth down, I should say. Well, there's no question here. You have to go for it. The biggest play of the game coming up. Fourth down and goal from inside the one yard line or just about on it. And the fans on both sides looking for the noise. Everyone on their feet as Hasselbeck leads the Zavarian offense out. Fourth and goal from the one. Camilla. He didn't make it! Stopped by the boxer defense! They're not out of danger yet, Timothy. They're pinned deep in their end. They need breathing room here. If Severian can come up with a big defensive stand, they could be right back down there. First and foremost, they cannot afford to give up a safety. No, absolutely not. They need they need to get some breathing room right here. What a defensive stand, though, by Brockton. I did not see who made the tackle. Perhaps we'll get another look at it. Might have been Craig Bernard, who stopped Camella just short of the end zone. Shaheen lunges ahead, but not gets a yard or two before being pushed backwards, but forward progress will give them a little bit of breathing space as the clock runs down inside of five minutes to play. If we could get the uh, fourth down play once again for a replay, I'd, I'd love the opportunity to see who it was that stopped Camella. He got around the corner, and I thought perhaps he had it. Nothing. Belios first one on him. We really can't tell from that angle. Belios tripped him up a little bit. Belios around the legs, and someone else got the, up, uh, someone else got the upper body. Second down and nine from the two yard line. The ball is loose, Severian has it. Mike Bourne never knew the ball was coming to him. Mistake free football, no way. The tide turns again.
We have a safety. Do I we did have not see the signal. I did not see the signal either. But both teams have gone to the sidelines, and there are two points on the board for Zavarian. The boxers will be kicking the ball away. Apparently, a boxer recovered the ball in the end zone. It was down there. I did not see the official signal, but that's that's the only thing that could have happened. 26 to 20. Zavarian. And Alan Percy is coming out to free kick the ball away. Zavarian will have the last chance to win this one. 424 left. They should have great field position because Percy's kicking into the win. It's a mixed blessing for Zavarian. They thought they might have had the ball down at the one yard line again for four more shots at the end zone and a touchdown with a chance for a two point conversion. Instead, they get the two points. Now they're going to have to work for and it. And we'll have to come back upfield to try to get six or more. 424 on the clock. The wind gusting across the field. And this is not a play the teams get to practice very often. The free kick by Bercy from his own 20 yard line. A good kick, a long kick. Kennedy downs it. He's down, he's, he's down. down. Camella tried to pick it up and run, but Kennedy was on his knees and a terrific kick by Alan Bercy. That could be the play of the game right there. Alan Bercy into the wind, sent a rocket booming off his foot. Wow. Bercy, who does the punting, and so every Zavarian. punter would love the opportunity to kick the ball away without a rush. Zavarian was playing him short. They were thinking what everyone else was thinking. He's gonna kick it into the wind, a high rise where the wind's gonna take it. No such luck, perfect spiral. The 29 yard line is the line of scrimmage. Come on, Alan Smith, come on, baby. And Zavarian trailing by six. Has 71 yards to go. Kennedy cuts back for five or six. They're going to mark him down. He was down. He was down. They're going to mark him down. He no, it's Braxton Ball. Fumble by Kennedy. The boxers recover. I don't know. I want to see the replay on that. It looked like his knees were down. Anyways, talk about change of momentum wow. from one end to the other. Let's see it right here. I think Kennedy was down. Let's take a look at this. Dodges He's up one right tackle, there. Gets the second effort. I don't know. Inconclusive. Too, too hard to tell from Inconclusive. that distance. I still he say he was ball. down. Bad call by the referee. But I'm not going to complain about but it. The boxers get it back. At the 34-yard line, Belanger, the sure-handed big man, will pick up three yards. Rockton finally gets a break this afternoon. Finally gets a break. I have seen some exciting games at every level, but uh, you don't see many where the momentum shifts so quickly, so many times, one play to the next. The boxers stopping Zavarian on fourth and goal from the one. Very next play, uh, two plays later, the boxers give up the ball, a safety, and kick it away. They pin Zavarian back, and then the fumble by Kennedy gives the boxers the ball near the 30-yard line of Zavarian. Mosley gets across the 30 before being pushed back by Rochford and Comella. Hughes Stanton in there as well, but the clock continuing to run. To the 27-yard line, Mosley was able to get, and uh, it'll set up the third down and five from there. The boxers' offense has controlled the play for most of the day, but the lead is only six. Shaheen possibly trying to draw Zavarian off sides as Bourne picks up the first down. Again, the second effort of Michael Bourne. He's been unbelievable back there. Zavarian doesn't know how to stop Brockton's offense. 187 yards on 20 rushes. Ball Just about on. at the 20-yard line. Again, the lines are gone. 
Shaheen, the keeper, good for four or five. And the clock rolling down towards the two minute mark. Both teams have had to use timeouts in the second half. So as we wind down to the final couple of minutes, they'll have to be used sparingly by either team. The boxers, of course, in no hurry to stop the clock, but Severian cannot stop it on every play here on defense as we pass the two minute mark. And now a timeout called. It appeared the officials were indicating Timeout. In fact, the time referee out. went over to talk to George McCabe. No timeout in the field. I think it's a, a two-minute warning of sorts. Clock should be running. That's right. There is no two-minute warning in high school football, but perhaps they're just trying to correct the discrepancy. The scoreboard clock was down to 157. The officials stopped it, and it now reads two minutes. So they're trying to get the official time and the unofficial time uh, back on the same spot so two minutes to play but the clock should have been running that's a that's a break for Zavarian a free timeout of sorts board oh he's picked up and put down by Rodriguez who's made some great tackles today it's not gonna dampen Mike Horn's day I'll tell you board down to the 13 clock running at 140 to play Watch this stick by Marcus Rodriguez. Bourne thought he saw daylight turn into midnight as soon as number 21 came up to pop him. Nice tackle. Got down nice low. tackle. You have to get down low to hit Mike. Less than a minute and a half to play. Shaheen keeps it, but not much there. Is able to turn it around for two. And now the clock stopped with 1.14 to play, a timeout called by George McCabe and the Zavarian Hawks. The boxer offense has really only made a couple of mistakes. As you watch Michael Shaheen, he got bounced right off his offensive line and then uh, turned over the left side for about two yards, but it brings up a fourth down and short situation, about a yard to go. The boxer mistakes Shaheen's interception to Adam Buckland in the third quarter, which led to a Zavarian score, and then the fumble in their own end zone, which they recovered, but cost them two points on the safety, and produced the current score, 26 to 20. Otherwise, the offense has been terrific. Zavarian also scored a touchdown after a fumbled punt return by Patrick Velios in the first half. That was the first Zavarian touchdown. So they've been beneficiaries of a couple of Brockton mistakes and have been very opportunistic to keep this as close as it's been in spite of an outstanding running performance by Michael Bourne. A terrific job by the offensive line of Brockton all day long. Steve Valley has made his way down to the boxer sidelines for his uh, usual post-game interview with Armand Colombo, regardless of the outcome. But the boxers need a first down here. Fourth and one. Mosley appears to have it as he lunges forward. First down, Mosley. Might have had it on the first effort, but then made sure, got an insurance yard. And where the Hawks might have been expecting Belanger on the fourth down and short carry, it's the big man, Mosley. You see Camella and Rodriguez to make the stop, but not in time, and the clock running down to 50 seconds to play. Shaheen. Won't just down it with his knee, he'll push it ahead for a couple of yards. They're inside the 10 yard line. And Zavarian will take another timeout with 44 seconds on the clock. And the chant begins on the boxer sideline. We're number one being shouted out by Brockton fans as they lay early claim to the number one ranking in Eastern Massachusetts. Oh, 
44 seconds to play. The boxers have never trailed. They led 14 to nothing in the first half before Jim Griffin kicked a 37-yard field goal for the Hawks. That was followed up by a Greg Camilla touchdown. To make it 14 to 10, that was our halftime score. The boxers scored on their first possession of the second half. Gary. But Zavarian bounced right back with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And then Michael Bourne, 27 yards for the score to open up an eight-point lead. Zavarian got the safety on their next possession. And that should do it. No, Zavarian's using their last timeout. That is it for their timeouts. Gary! The clock stops with 39 seconds to play, and the Boxers will only have to down the ball once more. Shaheen will just do this one more time. We've talked throughout the season about how difficult this boxer schedule has been. They faced the two out-of-state powers, Wagner from Staten Island, New York, and Cathedral Prep from Erie, Pennsylvania. They face St. John's Prep, their rival from the North Shore. And Fitchburg, one of the powers of Central Mass, and now come in here today to take on the team that's been ranked number one all season. And they will go away with an eight, a six point victory. Mike, Bourne, uh, Mike Shaheen making sure he doesn't have to snap the ball again. As the clock runs down to 20 seconds, and Armin Colombo leads the celebration on the sidelines. Now keeping his players off the field to avoid a penalty. It is fourth down, but the boxers will not have to snap the ball again. One second left and that's it. The boxers with their fifth consecutive victory knocking off the previously undefeated Hawks of Zavarian High School. The number three boxers improved to five and one and may very well take over the number one spot in Eastern Massachusetts. More than halfway through their schedule. 26 to 20, the final score. In just a couple of minutes, we'll be selecting our Cape Cod Cafe Most Valuable Player, and we'll have some final statistics for you. We're just awaiting Steve Valley's interview with Armin Colombo. Steve is with the coach now. Let's go to him on the uh, field. Steve? Thank you, Timothy. Armin, sweet victory today. Unbelievable victory. Tremendous comeback for these kids from game one. I can't say enough about them. Tremendous, tremendous victory. Who's number one? There's no Who question. is number one? No question. I thought your offense dominated the entire game. It did. Without the turnovers, this game would have been a blowout. We were the better team. We absolutely were the better team. No question whatsoever about it. Now, it surprised me. Obviously, Savarian's got a great offense with Kamala and Kennedy. Your defense seemed to handle the running game big. The only times they're able to get big gainers, the trick play at the end. Your defense, although they got some points scored against them, we had helped. We had turnovers at the wrong time. We did some bad things, but we overcame it, which is what great teams have to do. Right now, we are a great football team. Michael Bourne today, almost 200 yards in the ground. What a turnaround from that first week football player huh a lot of people gave up on him a long time ago before the season began just like a lot of people gave up on us after the first game but they should know better than to give up on Brock they should know better they should know better we have been waiting for this game ever since USA today came out because if any team from Massachusetts is supposed to be rated it's Brockton that's it end the ball game now you you sound, you sound like you've been holding this in for a while. You're really taking offense to people looking down on Brockton. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. Uh, the, I think this was about the third or fourth or fifth time that the Globe picked the other team. I hope they pick him the rest of the way. They pick every team we're going to play the rest of the way. We're just this team, a great, great football team. People have said, we've done a fine coaching job. They overlook in the fact that we have a lot of great football players. They, they overlook, realize what a great ball player Lucian. Michael Bourne is. 
they don't realize that line front is as good as any line that we have had at Brockton in many, many years. And it's, and it's the case of these guys playing football. And believe me, that's it, That's it, period. Happy, it's my birthday. It's, it's my happy birthday. birthday it's my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Timothy, a very happy Army Colombo. We'll send it back up to you and come back with our stats. Army Colombo's birthday today. Couldn't ask for a better present. Happy birthday, Coach. An outstanding present. I'm sure it's exactly what he asked for. The boxers improve to five and one and celebrate in good fashion at the middle of the field. We'll have the final statistics and our Cape Cod Cafe MVP in just a moment. Born at the center of the field, finally pulling off those pads. And uh, he put them to good use today. Leading the charge in this boxer victory, the biggest of the year so far, as they improved to five and one, the fifth straight victory, and their uh, victory over the number one team in Eastern Massachusetts all season long, Steve. They, uh, they had the offense there, the birthday boy, still 61, talking to the press. 61. 61 years old today and uh, celebrating as uh, you would expect he would. Uh, the numbers, as we said, in, in Brockton's favor Look much of the, the day. Look at the rushing yards. yards. Wow, 310 yards on the ground. Mike Bourne, fantastic day. Total yards, again, the score doesn't reflect what happened. Sure, it was tight, but without Brockton's mistakes, this was a blowout, just as I mentioned to Armin Colombo. Brockton's offense dominated this whole football game. The big play by Zaverian, the uh, halfback option in the fourth quarter that set up their final score. Uh, that's what made it a ball game. Otherwise, sure. Uh, Brockton sure. avoiding the three turnovers that you saw on the uh, stats list uh, would have made this a much different game. The paper will show 26 to 18, but uh, the, uh, 26 to 20 rather, but the boxers uh, were in control. This is our Cape Cod Cafe MVP. Michael Bourne uh, just gets better every week. He gets more confident, he accelerates faster, he uh, seems to find a hole every time he gets the ball. Approached the 200 yard mark today and uh, scored two touchdowns for the boxers, no question about it, he was the MVP. With a lot of help from his offensive line, yeah. his blockers in the backfield, and his quarterback, Mike Shaheen, but Michael Bourne uh, deserves uh, the second time this year that we've chosen him as very, our MVP. Very well deservedly. I'll tell you, Brockton is number one after they knocked off the previously undefeated and top